السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم We're coming to the end of this uh, chapter I believe there's only like two, or two chapters left in the book Two or three This is the last uh, narration for this chapter Abu Huri radiallahu an He narrates that once a Bedouin He entered the masjid And the Prophet sallallahu was sitting فَصَلَّى فَلَمَّا فَرَغَ قَالْ اللَّهُمَّ ارْحَمْنِي وَمُحَمَّدًا وَلَا تَرْحَمْ مَعَنَا أَحَدًا That he prayed salah and when he finished he made a dua. He said, Oh Allah, show, you know, show me mercy and show Muhammad mercy. وَلَا تَرْحَمْ مَعَنَا أَحَدًا Don't show anyone else mercy. You know? So after, after he made the dua, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he turned to him, he said, you know, لَقَدْ تَحَجَّرْتَ وَاسِعًا that something that is very vast, you have limited it. You, know, you have cut off. You, know, you basically put a boundary on what was vast and was infinite. After some time, he stood up from there. From Yelbath, only some time passed, it, passed and then in Barath al-Masjid. He stood up and he started urinating in the masjid. So people, they rushed towards him. Like, you know, they're trying to stop him, obviously. Like, well, what's going on? What are you doing? You know? When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, And he said, basically, calmly, he told them, just, you know, pour some water on the, on the urine. Uh, basically, let him finish. Another narration also mentions that. Like, let him finish, and then just pour water on the, uh, pour a bucket of water. ثُمَّ قَالَ إِنَّمَا بُعَثْتُمْ مُيَسِّرِينَ وَلَمْ تُبْعَثُوا مُعَسِّرِينَ that you have been sent to make things easy. This is Prophet Sallallahu saying this. That you have been sent to make things easy and you have not been sent to make things difficult. This hadith is in Tirmidhi, Jamia Tirmidhi. Two very interesting points that come from one incident. Number one, we see how the person when he made dua, he, what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi tell him? That you have restricted something that is very vast. Many times we do this without realizing we don't realize the mercy and the infinite blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and how vast His treasure is. And we limit ourselves. We limit ourselves by, you know, different means. Maybe it's our mind. Our mind, because it's not able to fathom how great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, when we have hopes and we think of Him, we think of Him in a limited way. Right? But how did the Prophet ﷺ tell us, to, what did he tell us to do with that? Actually in the hadith of Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that ana inda dhanni abdi bi. That I am as my slave thinks of me. So when we think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should think in the most broad manner. And not be narrow-minded. Don't limit ourselves. That's why when Rasulullah ﷺ said, when you ask for Jannah, ask for Firdaus. Don't just ask for the, the, the regular. When you go to someone and you, for example, you meet someone, say, let's say, a king or a ruler or, you know, and someone who is very rich and wealthy, he says, ask for something. You're going to ask for one dollar? Or you're going to ask for a million dollars? You know? So when we're, t when we're doing dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we're turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we're thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why are we thinking small? Why are we limiting ourselves? Always take the most advantage. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is willing to give. We just have to ask. When we ask for forgiveness, we ask for forgiveness for all our sins. Don't say, oh Allah, just forgive me for this one. He's ready to forgive all of them. Why are we asking for only one? So this is lesson number one. And number two was when the, the Bedouin, when he started urinating in the masjid, we learned the ethics and the way of teaching. You know, it's always you know, being or taking the firm or the strict approach and rushing into something is not always the correct solution or the wisest solution. It may be correct, but even scholars mention in this, in this point over here that if they didn't let him finish, what would happen? They're trying to stop him moving here, moving there. Now there's urine all over the masjid. Right? So this is just one wisdom that comes from here, but there's many different wisdoms. But the last sentence that Rasulullah said was, you weren't sent to make things difficult, rather to make it easy. And many times we, trying to be, you can say, more pious, you know, have more taqwa, fear of Allah, and we think that the firm, strict approach is the way. 
But it's not the way. It's not necessarily the most virtuous way. Just because something seems more difficult, doesn't mean it is the closest to the sunnah. This, that's not how Rasulullah taught. That's not what Allah wanted from us, that you know, anything that's difficult, you do that, anything that's easy, leave it. No. A prime example of that, and I'll end with this, um, I think we went through this narration actually in uh, Riyadh al-Saliheen, probably like last year or two years ago, it's been a while. But it comes towards the beginning, where the Sahabi, three Sahaba, they came to, the, came to Aisha radiallahu anha, and they wanted to know about the life of the Prophet Sallallahu like how he was. You know, so after they heard, the narration says, فَكَأَنَّهُمْ تَقَالُوهَا It is as if they thought it was less. So what did they do? One of them said that, you know, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to pray salah all night. And the other one said, I'm going to fast every single day. And the third said, you know, I'm never going to get married. You know, abstinence in all the ways possible. When Prophet ﷺ heard about this, he was upset with them. And he told them, that, you know, I, am, I fear Allah more than you. And I don't fast every day. I eat sometimes, I, fa I fast sometimes. I don't pray the whole night, every single night. And I also got married. Showing us that it's not about the most difficult or being the strictest or the f most firm, but rather that having a balance. Balance is the key. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see. You know? No ifrat, no tafrit. Just balance, but consistency. Once we have that, this is most likely, in most cases, the closest to the sunnah. This doesn't mean that we take something haram, we say, oh, I'm not really firm on this, we don't, can't be strict. So I'm going to, you know, I don't want to be too strict in eating halal, so sometimes I'll eat haram. That's not what this means, right? But in any virtuous thing, or any action where there is a choice of easy and hard, we don't have to take the hard way thinking that this is the closer to the sunnah. Many times the easier way, there is some wisdom behind it which actually ends up being indirectly closer to the deen, closer to the sunnah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to learn from this lesson, from both of these lessons and apply them in our life. اللهم أعيننا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سخطك وغضبك والنار اللهم أدخلنا الجنة بغير حساب اللهم أدخلنا الجنة بغير حساب وتوفنا مسلمين غير خزايا ولا نداما ولا مفتونين اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا واسعا وعملا متقبلا وشفاء من كل داء اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذك منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنت المستعان وعليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة يما يسفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين